Hello students, good morning. Today we are about to see an interesting topic called sonnet. So let me start with the definition first. The word sonnet derived from the Greek word sonato which means a sound. It is a short lyric of 14 lines and the Italian poet Petrarch was the first to use this form of the lyric. Petrarch had divided this sonnets into two parts the octave of eight lines and the sesset of six lines with the pause of sejura after the eighth line its rhyme scheme it was followed like a b b a a b b a c d e and c d e this is the rhyme scheme of petrarch now let me see the other points the word sonnet is derived from the italian word sonato it's a small or little song with the lyrics. It is a 14 lines poem. Basically, sonnet has 14 lines. It is uh, written in iambic pentameter. It has 10 syllables of each. What is iambic pentameter? Iambic pentameter is a line of verse with 5 metrical feet. Each has one short unstressed syllable followed by the long stressed syllable. Sonnets are divided into different groups based on the rhyme schemes they follow. The rhyme scheme of a sonnet are arranged according to a certain rhyme scheme. Basically, the English sonnet is usually ABAB, CDCD, EFEF, GG and the Italian rhyme scheme whereas ABBA, ABBA, CDE and CDE. So there is a vast difference from the rhyme scheme between English and Italian. Now the first uh, title is the Italian or Petrarchan sonnet. The first point is it was introduced by an Italian poet Francesco Petrarch in the 14th century. It is called the classical or uh, and model since most of them imitated it he is the uh, pioneer of the sonnet and later on Pet by use by having the petrarchian sonnet many of the english poets started to imitate it in its uh, it is a short poem of 14 lines it is also same 14 lines it expressing single feeling or thought it composed of two parts first one is the octave octave means eight lines Octave stands, it is a stanza, it has 8 lines, whereas Sesset, it is a stanza, it has 6 lines. So the octave has two rhyme schemes, just A and B. It follows A, B, B, A, A, B and B, A. The Sesset has three rhyme, C, D, E, C, D, E and C, D, E. The sonnet is also um, from the lyric. It is a short lyric of 14 lines. Petrarch had divided his sonnet into two parts. This is the two parts we have seen now. And then here is some example for you. You can see there uh, when the assault was intended to the city. This is the title of this sonnet. Captain or colonel or knight in arms whose chance of these defenseless doors may seize. If deeds of honor did thee over please, guard them and him within protect for harms. It is the starting lines. It is called quatrain. Quatrain means four lines. You can see here couplet is two lines like a tirukural as I told you in the previous lecture. Tercet has three lines. English in English on the pathina three T H R E three Ide on the Latin la pathina tercet in Sudrang. And then quatrain. Quatrain means four lines. Okay, so this is the example of Petrarchian sonnet or Italian sonnet. Okay, first uh, part is octave with the eight lines. At the concluding uh, part is sesset with the six lines. So it is the rhyme scheme. You can see this clearly. The octave divided into two stanzas of four lines, each called quatrains. The sesset into two of three lines each called tercet which was we, we already saw this in the previous slide with a clear example if you want to know more clear clarification you can search that poem in the internet itself after the end of the 
the octave eight, which means the eighth line. There is a pause. While we are reciting, we should give a pause. Petrarch sonnet were first imitated in England in both their stanza form and their standard subject. The hopes and the pains of an adoring male lover. It was written by Sir Thomas Wyatt in the early 16th century. Sir Thomas Wyatt was the first to write in sonnet in England. So he is the first person who write the sonnet in England. Okay, we have many writers in uh, Latin language as well, but when it comes to English, Mr. Uh, Wyatt, Sir Thomas Wyatt has started this. It is a Petrarchan form. Of course, he imitated the same, imitated the same Petrarchan form in the sonnet that Wyatt Wyatt follows. His use of the measure often rigid, and also the Petrarchan form was later used for uh, great varieties of subjects by John Milton, Wordsworth, Christina Rossetti, and Dante Gabriel Rossetti. So later it was followed by them. Here Wyatt entirely. fails to capture the warm senses color and the delicate music of the italian poet his great contemporary earl of surrey also wrote sonnets in which he expressed his entirely imaginative love for geraldine or lady elizabeth fitzgerald so these two are writers thomas wyatt and earl of surrey they are like uh, you know twins so they started to write sonnets in english which does not have as many rhyming possibilities as italian by introducing a new pair of rhymes in the second or fourth lines of the octave since it is uh, imitated from uh, italian they struggle to bring that originality from the latin language but somehow they manage to bring it so these they are the early sonneteers in england wyatt and surrey it was uh introduced in england in the 16th century by these people thomas wyatt henry howard and earl of surrey wyatt was first to write the sonnet in england and he followed the same the petrarchan form it is contradictory to the italian form because he cannot uh, simply remake as it is right so he has to make some other changes into it so he changed many thing in contradictory to the italian form sare also wrote sonnet in which he expressed his imaginary love for geraldine it is a lady elizabeth fitzgerald and then the artistic matrix he divided sonnet into three quatrains with a couplet okay so he uh, has that uh, three quatrains with a couplet couplet means two lines couplet he divided this into three and then at the end of the concluding line there is a couplet and then he is the first to use that form of sonnet which came to be called shakespearean form so this is later called as shakespearean sonnet and then even shakespeare has followed this into his uh, dramas as well everybody knows that uh, shakespeare is the greatest dramatist he is the father of uh, english dramatist also so he followed that the rhyme scheme for that is a b a b c d c d e f e f g g this is the shakespearean sonnet form but before it was uh, introduced by these early sonnets wyatt and surrey now let's see the shakespearean sonnet now shakespearean sonnet is generally written in an iambic pentameter there are 10 syllables in each line The rhyme scheme of Shakespearean sonnet is A B A B C D C D E F E F and G G, and this is difficult to follow a little bit. But when we come, when we used to read his sonnets, we'll come to it very often, very easily. Also, the sonnet falls into three quatrains and a concluding couplet. It is divided into four parts totally, whereas the Italian uh, format has three parts. Okay. the final two lines is the highest peak of poet's thought of course the concluding line always has the highest peak of the thoughts by the poets so totally shakespeare has written 154 sonnet among them according to me all these sonnets are very beautiful and they are rich in uh, every every category it takes but especially sonnet 18 and sonnet 116 are the really the best 
so you can see the uh, one example of uh, shakespearean form title is remembrance went to the session of sweet silent thought i summoned up remembrance of things past i sigh the lack of a many thing i sought and with the world was new while my dear times waste so it is it's how this is the shakespearean sonnet has started with you can see the rhyme scheme a b a b okay thought rhymes with sought past rhyme with waste adhe maari dhaan second stanza la pathina flow rhymes with o night night stands with, i mean rhymes with sight quadrant 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 kadasila vand end of the line we have a couplet which means four uh, divided into four stanza okay next we are going to see the elizabethan sonnet or else it is also called spenserian sonnet the themes for elizabethan or uh, spenserian sonnet is love and rela- relationship following petrarch's early example a number of elizabethan authors arranged their poems into sonnet sequences in which a series of sonnets are linked together by exploring the varied aspects of relationship between lovers or else by indicating a development into a relationship that continu- constitutes a kind of implicit plot so these two are the main theme love and relationship sir philip sidney's ordered his sonnets in a sequence under the title astrophel and stella in 1580 they express sidney's passion for penelope who was the that time of wife of lord rich so penelope he loved uh, you know the he has that admi- admiration towards the lady and she is the main uh, you know topic in his writings the publication of astrophel and stella at once caught the imagination of the people and gave rise to the vogue of the sonnet so after the publication of astrophel and stella people started to read like anything so the the fashion of sonnet was started by him in a different form followed by spencer in 1598 So Spencer published the Amoretti it is also a sonnet sequence it is a collection about 88 sonnets so he developed a new variety Spencer developed a new variety each of the quatrains linked to by an intermixture of rhymes the rhyme scheme for uh, which is Spen- Spencer used is a b a b b c b c c d c d and finally e e so this amoretti has 88 sonnets totally which was uh, later shakespeare's 154 sonnets were published in 1609 the it is an example of the spenserian sonnet pardon me for the blurry image okay next we are going to see milton's english sonnet Milton's sonneteering represents practically a fresh start. His sonnet was individual undertaking unique in the mid 17th century. Milton's sonnets are occasional and very personal on different topics and so cannot be arranged in sequences like Elizabethan sonnets. Milton's English sonnets number 23 in all. So totally he wrote 23 sonnets. Six of the sonnets belonged to the period of Milton's youth age and the remaining were written during 1645 to 1658 so these later english sonnets are the most immediately personal of all milton's utterances milton's formal model is not english sonnet with its tendency to close with a couplet but the italian original which on the whole avoided such an ending on the whole milton sonnets strike a new note of lofty dignity conformable on his epic personality milton uses the form to express his deeply felt emotions on contemporary politics religion public figures of importance womanhood relationship of a husband and wife and such personal matters as his blindness so these are the topic which milton has undertake by his hand 
Similarly, he introduced a far-reaching innovation in its technique following the Petrarchian tradition. Next, we are going to see some of the functions of the sonnet, how it is functioning. The sonnet has become popular among different poets because it has a great adaptability. Rhythms are strictly followed. It could be a perfect poetic style for elaboration or expression of a single feeling of thought with its short length in iambic pentameter. In fact, it gives an ideal laboratory for to a poet for exploration of strong emotions. Due to its short length, it is easy to manage for both the writer and the reader. So this, these are the functions of a sonnet. Then we have the sonnets after Milton. How the sonnets after Milton were written. After Milton there comes the Augustan age. The sonnet form fell into disuse. Hardly any sonnet worth the name was written during the period of over 100 years. The sonnet was revived by Wordsworth who had widened its scope by bringing in nature as one of its subjects. Since then, the sonnets, the topic of sonnets were like uh, household things and love and relationship. When Wordsworth started to take sonnet in his hand, he took nature as his subjects. And after that, Keats, Browning and Rossetti are among other able practitioners of the form. Very little attention is now paid to the rules of sonnet making and wide liberty and flexibility in use of them form is indulged in. The sonnets the sonnet continues to unabate in the modern period. Of course, when the modern period comes, the admiration towards the sonnet started to reduce and it is decreased also because the poet the the form of poet is going towards some other extent. We have Robert Bridges' admirable sonnet sequences like The Growth of Love. Rob, Rupert Brooke and John Maysville have immortalized themselves as writers of sonnet. Later period in English literature, the love for sonnet started to decrease. That is the reason uh, it, it may be called the fall of sonnet also. So that's all for in this video. I hope you get the enough information. It is a quite long video, I know that, because the sonnet has a lot of important things to talk about. So it runs along, you know, it's like, you know, around 18 minutes. Anyway, thank you.